Hey, don't rage quit bro here, bringing you an update to the Castman Damage Taken Walking Simulator build. In this video, I'll be discussing how I migrated from my budget build to my current state, how to go about upgrades and what to get first, crafting your own items, advanced build upgrades, and future upgrades for myself while showcasing the insane damage this build puts out with some footage in the background. To start, let's talk about upgrading from the budget version. In that version, I was using a double heartbound loop setup for self damage and had about 1300 ward with flask active. The next thing we'll want to do is get higher ward, which will let us ditch one of the heartbound loops and support forbidden right for self damage. If you got currency to burn, you can just buy the higher ward items outright, or you can do what I did and craft your own items. All three ward slots are crafted with the same manner. To start, you'll want to buy a high percentile base for the runic crown, gauntlets, and sabatons with at least eye level 84. Next, you'll need a bunch of primitive resonators and dense fossils. Simply spam until you get a high ward and you don't need to worry about the suffixes just yet as we're about to fix them. The boots, however, I chose to not get three ward prefixes because I didn't want to feel fat and slow. I wanted either movement speed naturally or on an open prefix to benchcraft them. Alternatively to dense fossils, you can craft the boots by using harvest benches to reforge the items. Just stay away from the ones that put prefixes on, like life. Additionally, you can use essences to craft, but again, only use ones that take a suffix for the essence mod. Although both of these are viable alternatives, Dense fossils are the best method, in my opinion. Now in my experience with how Eldritch Chaos Orbs work, they reroll the mods, but only the same number of affixes which the item had. What this means is if the boots, for example, only had one suffix after using dense fossils, you'll most likely want to fill the remaining suffixes prior to using Eldritch Chaos Orbs. I filled the suffixes on the helmet and the boots, with either Leo Exalt Slams or Harvest Exalt Slams, and only put two suffixes on the gloves. Next, use a single Lesser Eldritch Icker on them to put the Eater of Worlds implicit on. Spam Eldritch Chaos until you have decent suffixes. From here, you'll want to spam Eldritch Ickers and Embers until you get the implicits you desire. On the gloves, I think Unnerve and Hinder are best in slot, and as we are hitting many times, Lesser Eldritch Icker and Ember is perfectly fine here. For the boots, I chose to get movement speed and reduced cooldown of travel skills, though action speed would be just as good as move speed really. For the helmet, there are a few options, though I went with a couple of damage mods. As far as enchanting the helmet goes, Righteous Fire spell damage I think is the best choice, followed by Volatile Dead consumes one additional corpse. For the gloves, I'd recommend Commandment of Reflection for the enchantment, as it creates a clone of yourself regularly, which is a distraction for enemies to target. For the boots, the enchant could be a couple of things. If you don't have an Unwavering Stance Skin of the Lords or another method of stun immunity, I'd recommend 80% chance to avoid being stunned if you've killed recently, and if you do have stun immunity, I'd recommend 10% damage penetration if you've killed recently. Once you have the implicits how you want, we'll want to use a Hillock 30% bench to boost the ward higher. Now you could use perfect fossils prior to crafting the item, but I find this to be a waste of currency because it could very well be the case you hit an item that is pretty good and sellable, but not high enough for you for an upgrade. Now, early on when you don't have much currency, don't bother with the 30% craft as it's between 70 chaos and 1 exalt per bench. You can get 9% CDR on boots implicit with Eater of Worlds with a rank 5 implicit, which would allow you to not have it on the belt for another available suffix, though this is RNG based and difficult to obtain, so I think getting CDR on the belt is the better choice. Hopefully this brings your ward total high enough so we can switch to a single heartbound loop with Forbidden Right. I recommend a minimum of 1600 with Flask Up to help ensure a better mapping experience. On the ring, try to get an unset ring with elemental weakness on hit. This essentially gives us the two sockets back that the Forbidden Right setup takes. 
look for life, resistances, and dexterity as other mods, and an open prefix is good here, but not required just yet. For the amulet, I picked up one with life, resistance, crit multi, and dexterity with an open prefix. All of these mods aren't required or anything, but this is what you should be looking for. Between the ring and the amulet, one of them needs to have an open prefix so we can benchcraft mana recoup on it. By using Forbidden Right, this will let us increase the level of our castman damage taken and skill gems by 1-2 to two levels, which gives us more damage. The next upgrade I went with after this was picking up an Interrogation Small Cluster Jewel. This will effectively double your damage. You can do this prior to the ward item upgrades, but when I was at this stage it was too expensive for me, so I started on crafting the ward items first. After this, it will be using Divergent Cast and Damage Takens to up our skill gem levels higher for further damage. The first one you should get will be for the chest, and the next will be for the weapon, and then the last setup with the Eye of Winter can be done later on, as it's not really a big DPS setup, and it is meant really just to proc Brittle. I'll also be including a link to my Castman Damage Taken calculator to show what level Castman Damage Taken you can use. I have locked the sheet so no one can edit it and mess up my formulas, so you'll have to download a copy to enter your data in. At this point your character will be really strong, but there is still plenty more upgrades we can do for even more damage. First, let's talk about what we'll be replacing Dust on with, the Annihilating Light. The upside is pretty obvious, triple damage. The downside is we need to get our resistances to 190% without the staff, and that's assuming you get a perfect 60% roll on it. To do this, the easiest way is using a bismuth flask with elemental res on the suffix and increased effect on the prefix. You can just drop the quicksilver if you want, but this made me feel fat and slow, so I wanted to be able to use a third flask. There's a couple ways to go about this, but first, let's take a look at my character sheet from 3.16 and 3.17. These will be our targets for duration, reduced charges used, and increased charges gained. The first and easiest option is using our anoint on the amulet to pick up either careful conservationist or replenishing remedies. Careful conservationist reduces the charges used but increases flask effect which will apply to Ulros and give us less ward. Replenishing remedies will give us 15% increased charges gained with no real downside. The second option is getting a Balbala Jewel with 20-30% to 30 charges gained on the Notables. Keep in mind our goal is to hit the numbers I have here on my character sheets. Both of these are viable to help get our stats where we need them, though I am greedy. I want to use the Anoint for a double curse setup, and the Balbala, which I don't have just yet, will be used for even more damage. The last option is the most expensive and time consuming route, crafting our own Cluster Jewels. We need to start off with getting a couple base jewels with eye level 84 plus with 6 passives. We'll be using alteration spamming, using augments when applicable, regaling, and if something doesn't hit, scouring and starting over. The three mods we are looking for are fasting, 35% increased effect, and 3% charges gained. The ideal magic item will be 35% increased effect and 3% charges gained. From here, we'll want to beast imprint the item, then regal. Assuming you didn't get lucky and hit fasting, there are two options. It either hit a prefix or a suffix. If it hit a suffix, then we'll be using aug speed to get a 50-50 of forcing fasting onto the prefix. If you don't get fasting, use the imprint and start over. If it hit a prefix, we are annulling and hope it takes off the garbage mod that we just put on with the regal, and if it doesn't, and we remove the 35% or the 3%, use the imprint and start over. If it does remove the mod, now we have a rare item with 35 increased effect and 3% charges gained, so we're ready for aug speed and the 50-50 of hitting fasting. Rinse and repeat the above steps until you have the jewel. If you hit either 35% or fasting, we want to fill the suffix with augment orb, then regal to try to hit the other one, fasting or 35%. Getting a fasting with a 3% charges gained when it goes rare is potentially usable, but not ideal as we're losing a bit. 
When I hit things like this, I would set it aside and start on another base, but most likely I'd end up selling it. There isn't a way to force the charges gained or increased effect, however, so keep this in mind. Once you are able to get your flask stats up so we can use any third flask and put the bismuth on, we should be above the 190% requirement to use the weapon. Now let's say we hit 190% on the button and can now use the weapon. We still need to take another thing into consideration. Curses. We need to be curse immune if we can. With a perfect rolled quicksilver with the of the owl suffix, we can get 65% there. Keep in mind survival secrets counteracts a portion of the alchemist prefix. Between this 65% we get here and soul of yugal, which gives us 30%, we have about 98% reduced curse effect. The other option is crafting a ring, and I went with this method. To start, we'll need an eye level 84 plus unset ring with either reduced effect of curses or elemental weakness on hit, and then a second ring with the other curse, though the eye level doesn't matter on the second ring. We'll awaken orb the second ring onto the unset. Now I was just hoping for either an open suffix or res or dex, but I got pretty lucky and hit the life recoup. The life recoup mod on the ring is not required at all in this build, but it does add a bit of QOL for when we have degens or impact to recovery. If we got an open suffix, I'd recommend using the bench for suffixes can't be changed and hitting it with a veiled chaos. If there isn't a prefix available to put the suffixes can't be changed on, we need to fill the suffix with a dummy craft, then use the bench for reforge keep suffixes first. If you end up getting a prefix for the veil and it filled the suffix with something, you'll need to decide if that something is good enough for you. If it isn't good enough, it's annulling and hope you take it off, and if you fail, it's starting over. If it is good enough for you, then unveil the prefix and we're looking for either a combo life roll or recoup. If it only has the combo life roll, we need to have an open prefix so that we can craft recoup on it. If you hit a veiled suffix, then you're looking for a dex combo stat roll. And if not, same thing as we just mentioned, deciding whether you want that or to try and annul it off. Assuming the suffix is now good with you, it's either using suffixes can't be changed and harvest bench for reforged life or reforge keep suffixes until we have a life roll and an open prefix to craft recoup onto it. Next up is the amulet and it's similar to the ring and process, though a tiny bit easier. We'll start with taking an I-84 plus base with some form of dexterity on the implicit and either elemental penetration or non-chaos as extra chaos, and then a second amulet with the other mod. And again, the eye level of the second item doesn't matter. We'll awaken orb the second amulet onto the first. We must have an open prefix here so we can put recoup on it. If the prefix fills, we have to try to annul it off, and if we fail, we have to start over. Assuming the prefix is open, you now have the choice of trying to do the Veiled Chaos method to try to put the recoup on the prefix, or just benchcraft the recoup on it. If you go with the Veiled method, this will be costlier to do up front, as when you hit the prefix Veil, and it's not recoup, you're trying to annul it off, and if you fail, starting over. But this does make getting the item to better standards a bit easier and cheaper for the remaining part. And if we get an open suffix with two good mods, we can benchcraft something on as our bench isn't consumed by the prefix. If you did go with the veiled recoup method, then we'll be doing prefixes can't be changed and a harvest bench for reforge crit to try and force a crit multi-roll on the suffixes. You can also do reforge keep prefix bench and just see what you get. If you didn't go with the veiled recoup method, then the only way we can do the reforge crit bench is using multi-mod and prefixes can't be changed, which is costlier to do for each attempt. So just using reforge keep prefix is probably the best choice. After a couple reforge keep prefix, I hit a T4 crit multi and a T3 resistance, and this was good enough for me, well, for now anyways. For the anoint, I'm going with whispers of doom. While mapping, I don't use Righteous Fire anymore as my damage is high enough for fast clear, so I put the second curse here, Assassin's Mark. Sniper's Mark is a decent alternative, but it only applies to projectiles, and unfortunately, Volatile Dead doesn't count. 
For Boston or Simulacrum, I'll take out Phase Run and put in Righteous Fire. Getting phasing for Simulacrum is a must, and is just, generally speaking, nice to have. I picked up a phasing on Kill on my Abyss Jewel. Here's an overview of what my current items look like, followed by what the gem links currently are. Now I'm approaching max gear, but not quite there yet. I will most likely get alternate quality level 21 gems when I can either make them or when they are available on the market. I would like to obtain a 2120 divergent cast and damage taken for both the weapon and the Eye of Winter setup. For the amulet, crafting one with a plus one to all skill gems will be ideal, but time consuming and expensive to make from scratch and very expensive to buy outright. But also like to pick up a corrupted blood jewel as well. I know I can get it on the Abyss Jewel, but I want to use that for other things, and I'm still on the hunt for a really nice 6 mod, and adding Corrupted Blood to the list makes it even harder to find. For now, I'm using Soul of Ralakesh as I am Curse Immune from the Ring and Flask, and 5 stacks of Corrupted Blood isn't deadly, just takes away a tiny bit from the recoup I am getting. I would also like to pick up an Awakened GMP for the extra projectile, and the less, less projectile damage. Eventually, I will buy like 50 Balabala jewels and picking the best two or three for myself and selling the rest back to the market. And that about wraps up the video. I'll leave you guys with a Eater of Worlds kill.